Born in Manhattan, Paul enlisted in the Navy at age 17 during the war. After DMOB, he was working in a music store when he got his Save Your People phone call. I get a strange phone call one morning. It says, Paul Kamenetsky. I said, yes. We would like to know if you'd like to help your people be on the corner of 39th Street, Lexington Avenue, Thursday afternoon, 4 o'clock, and a man with a black leather jacket will walk by. If he puts a newspaper under his arm, follow him. If he puts it in the waste paper basket there, walk away because you're being followed. Click. Sure enough, at 4 o'clock, a man walks by with a black leather jacket, tucks a newspaper under his arm. I follow him around the corner. He goes up to a building. He says, well, you want to help us? We're going to run small boats between Cyprus and Palestine. He said, if the British catch you, they're going to hang you. I said, let's go. So it begins, innocently, naively. Not knowing what they're getting into, soon Paul will be involved in one of the strangest underground wars of the century. This war will also involve 200 other young Americans. It is a war which will be fought across the rocky shores of the Mediterranean, in prison camps, will create battles with FBI, and will change Paul forever. Trade winds left Baltimore, bound for Portugal in February 1947. As we set sail, we um, uh, hit the tail end of a hurricane. And I want to tell you, I've seen seas in my day, but this was uh, unbelievable. The ocean, I've never seen anything like it. And at one point, our ship was almost turned over. These kids, we had a couple of kids who never been on a ship before in their lives. And we had to train them to work on the ship as able personnel. The crew, there was no, no uh, distinction as you would have on a normal ship where the officer gives a command, everybody does it. On this ship, uh, you gave a command and they say, what for, why, you know? All the crew knew they would pick up immigrants and probably confront the British. We tie up in Lisbon next to a British tugboat and in order to go ashore, you walk over the, over the tugboat. As we're going, the seamen say to us, hey, Yanks, we hit as a Jew ship in port. Would you help us look for it? We said, we certainly would. One night, Captain Brilliant came on board and said, fellas, we got to go. They've caught wise. They ransacked my hotel room, and they're looking for papers. Get out. We couldn't bring the anchor up. And we were dragging it to get out a little bit. And I was on deck, I look around, I see the city of Lisbon getting dark. What had happened, we were dragging the anchor in the port and pulling up the electric wires. And we're knocking out the electricity. So I could see it getting dark all around and we getting out. It was quite an adventure to get out of Lisbon. From Lisbon, the trade winds passed through the Straits of Gibraltar. Tension was rising. In a few days, they would head for a clandestine coastal rendezvous and finally take aboard the DPs. We pull into a port in Italy, and uh, there the light is flashing, and we come in close to the seawall. We stop, we drop our anchor there, we stay there. We put lifeboats over the side and with long hawsers, which is a rope, and they pull these boats back and forth with people from the shore. And this is the first time I met my people. What I saw was my mother, my aunt, my uncle, my, my people who had gone through difficult time. And each one of them, as they climbed up the ladder and came over the side, these were the first time I saw DPs, displaced persons. Each one hugged you as they came over. And they said to us, it's game, it's a Israel. We're going to Israel, to our promised land. As the trade winds sailed further and further east, overshadowing everything was the thought that somewhere out there waiting for them were the ships of the Palestine Patrol. And we renamed the ship now the Hatikva. And uh, we put up a, 
Jewish flag in those days. It was today's an Israeli flag. All of a sudden, two destroyers come up alongside of you, and they hit you from both sides at once like a nutcracker. They come up alongside, and they, they hit you, and they throw ropes on you, and little gangways, and Marines, armed Marines, come running on board. The British prison ship carrying the volunteers had been used for months to carry refugees to Cyprus. Now it was heading for Haifa, while a bomb was being built in its home. The detonator is set a half mile out at sea, and we hear the anchor going down. And that would mean that the way the timer is set, the ship would go down, and we'd all be out at sea. I say, Moshe, you got to stop the detonator. Moshe says, when I went to school, they taught me how to set it. They didn't teach me how to stop it. I don't know how. And we got the people that are walking off there, walking off there, walking off. And we're the last ones over there. And as we walk off, we hear boom, boom. and the ship shook. And the ship blew a hole in it, and she sank right on the pier. On May the 13th, 1948, the British finally left Palestine. A day later, Israel declared its independence. Over the years, 70,000 DPs headed for Palestine by sea. The 10 American ships involved were crewed by over 200 volunteers and brought in 30,000 immigrants. <laughs> 